today we're going to go over some relatively simple uh, DAX formula here, um, but I think it's it's a it's a good idea to just think about logically how these things are actually calculated and how DAX work with the data model. So what we're going to do here is we'll quickly review the data model. So we've got uh, we've got a sales table, and we've also got uh, as a fact table, and we've got our dates table, products table, regions table, and customer table as our lookup tables. So they're all connected up like so. If you've seen a lot of uh, other examples uh, through Enterprise DNA TV, it's, it's all it's all, all relatively the same. Keep it relatively as the, the same as much as possible, just for consistency. So what we're going to do is we want to see per day how many customers we actually sell to. And it's going to showcase a slight issue uh, that we may have with uh, one formula. But I'm going to show you how you can actually solve it a couple of other ways. Um, and, and, and by doing so, it, it will enable you to understand what's happening in the data model. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to, um, I just want to show, I want to show, so per day, I want to just create a visualization here, or a table, sorry. I want to look at uh, per day how many customers did we actually sell to. Now, what you might think of doing, right, is you might come in here and try and create a measure and call it total customers. And you might go, uh, you might go distinct count, for example, customer name, like so. Because logically, that's what you would think you would need to do. You'd need to count up, well, how many customers actually on uh, do we sell to every single day? Now, the problem here, and it will be showcased when I drag this into the table, is that we are getting exactly the same result for every single day. Now, the reason why we are getting this is because for every single day, what this formula is doing is it's running to the, it's going to the customer table and then it's saying, okay, what's the distinct count uh, of customers for every single day? Now the problem, right, is that this date table has absolutely no relationship to the customer table. The only relationship it has is to the sales table. So for every single filter that is placed on this table, nothing gets filtered here. So for every single day, we're just running distinct count over the entire customer table every single day, and that's why we get exactly the same result. So if we actually wanted to look at how many customers we sold to on any particular day, we need to change this formula somewhat. We need to change it to actually look at the sales table because that's what the date table is, con is connected to. So when a filter is placed on, when some context is placed onto uh, a, a result, uh, it is going to flow down through the relationships and it's going to flow to the table which it is connected to. And in this case, it's the sales table. So what we've got to do is we've got to create this formula. So we'll create another one. We'll call it total customers, total customers two. We need to go distinct count, but instead of the customer table, we need to find the customer index, the customer name index inside the sales table. And if I go into here and drag that into the table, you'll see now that this uh, is being filtered for on every single day how many unique customers or how many unique customer name index in this particular case there are for every single day. So that's how you do that. Now that's a simple way. There is actually another way to generate exactly the same result. I would go for this way if I, uh, if I was you, but I just want to showcase that there's never really one way to come to an answer in Power Bro. There's always there's always a, a couple, sometimes more than that. And so I'm going to create another formula here, total customers three. And what I'm going to do is I'm inside of calculate. I'm going to reference that first custom total customers measure that we created, that one which is just generating 50 for every single day. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put, I'm just going to add the sales table, the entire sales table as the filter here. And if I push enter and drag this into the table, you'll see that it takes a little while to calculate because the calculation is a little bit more complex than what we're doing there. But <clears throat> it is actually generating exactly the same result as our correct one, total customers two. And that's because of a concept called expanded tables. And what the sales table actually represents here is an entire flat file of this data model. 
So this sales table, if you think about the sales table, it's actually, because we've got all these connections or these relationships, it's actually this one massive flat file that includes dates, products, regions, and customers. And by utilizing this technique, this formula here, you're essentially enabling uh, the uh, DAX language to then go and uh, recalculate this total customer's uh, measure, but calculate it over this entire expanded sales table. In the first, uh, in the first measure, there was there was no connection. We created a connection in this third measure by referencing the sales expanded table inside of a calculate statement, and that's how we generate uh, the correct result. But with this, we can already do some we can do some cool stuff. So I would generally just go for the, the number two option, which we created. But now we can actually then visualize this. I actually quite like uh, the area chart. And we can see well through time how did how did we how many customers did we actually sell to per day? Then we could actually use the inbuilt uh, uh, analytics uh, functions inside of uh, Power BI as well, and we might want to draw a trend line for example, and change the color of that. And you can see well on average it looks like we're around eight or nine. Uh, customers per day and you can see what's above and what's below and remember this is all dynamic as well so what we can do is we can actually bring in say an additional piece of context that we might want to add and we can then utilize some additional context to change the actual result that we have in that table there so we've gone through a few concepts uh, but I think this is a really useful one and you can use this for a range of different a range of different ways I mean you instead of customers it could be products it could be regions it could be salespeople so on and so forth there's heaps of different ways that it, you can actually utilize uh, utilize this technique at its core it's just really a simple distinct count there understanding what distinct count does but you do have to understand what is going on in the data model behind the scenes just to make sure that you're calculating the correct result